Sorry about the mess, we're making a load of videos over the past few days. Right, so I wanted to have a chat about print marketing because print marketing is something that a lot of people are saying that it's dead, it's, um, it's out of fashion, um, people don't do it anymore, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your marketing budget. Now, the big question, is print marketing dead? No, it's not dead, it's very much not dead. It depends entirely on who you're trying to target and what for and what with, right? So is print marketing dead if you're trying to target millennials? Yes, then print marketing is dead because millennials don't read stuff. I'm one, I don't pick up flyers on the street. I purposely cross to the other end of the street to walk around the dude that's holding out flyers, right? No one picks them up in, in sort of that, that, that sort of age scenario. Best way to reach students and, and millennials and people of sort of the, the younger generation is through social media, is through through even paid marketing on, on Google and things like that, right? So um, print marketing is dead if you're targeting the wrong people with the wrong thing. Now, is print marketing dead if you're a corporate uh, an event or an exhibition? No, print marketing is the ideal solution if you're at an exhibition and you're a training provider or you're a marketing agency, for example, because you're speaking to other people in that target group, right? You're just speaking to people that will be wanting flyers to bring back to the CEO, to their managing director, to collect some sort of material when they're back from that exhibition to decide whether they want to engage with any of the people that they met there. So in that case, yeah, print marketing is very much alive because you're targeting the right people with the right stuff. Now, when I say print marketing, I know a lot of you probably think of just a flyer or a brochure, and that's not true. Print marketing is literally anything that is printed. So even if you think about massive pull-up banners, do we have any? No, no. But if you think about massive pull-up banners that you see exhibitions and stuff, that's still print marketing. It's not something that you hand out and you send people away with, but you, the fact of the matter is you print it, therefore it is print marketing. So mugs, for example, that's technically print marketing, even though it's sort of gimmicky and promotional material, but if you had a mug with your company logo on it, that's print marketing. But again, if you try to target students or millennials with something that's printed, something they physically have to touch and take away and, and put it in their bedroom, they're probably not gonna they're probably not gonna respond to that. Because we are all online. We're we're in the digital world, we look at ads, we respond to things that appeal to us in terms of videos, memes, and things like that, right? People that are in a corporate world, for example, and this is this is where sort of most of you know what most of what I'm talking about is, is aimed at, which is the corporate world, if you're doing B2B stuff print marketing is very much still alive. So like I mentioned with the example of the exhibition banners, for example, there's plenty of banners and stuff that we print for people's presentations and things like that because it's still nice to have. It doesn't necessarily have to directly correlate to a return on investment, but what it does is it instills the brand awareness of, of that brand or of that business at that presentation, at that exhibition, and allows people to remember it because when was the last time you went to an exhibition and you remember one stand because it had a beautiful um, encapsulated, you know, printed design, um, nice desks with with custom you know custom logos printed on the front of it, banners and and flyers and mugs and pens. They all have the same congruent logo on them, congruent branding. Um, you probably remember those, right? A few pop into your head as I say that. But you probably have no recollection of the ones that turned up with one banner and one type of business card, one type of flyer, and they all look different um, and they weren't very nicely done. So that sort of stuff comes into play very very much. So especially in exhibitions and presentations just because people remember you. Now you're not really necessarily gonna attract people by you know giving out one fly is not gonna make a huge difference, but what it will do is on the mass, if a lot of people are walking around with your bags, things like that, a lot of that stuff is gonna matter on, on, the, on the bigger scale of things. So answer is print marketing is not dead whatsoever. It is dead if you're trying to target the wrong people with the wrong stuff, much like if you try to target 65 and 70 year olds for filling up an old people's home with Facebook and Instagram ads. You know, 70 year old people are not on Instagram, right? You can target their daughters and the sons because they're hanging out there to try and potentially get them into a home viewing for, for, a, for a retirement home or something, but you're not gonna target 70 year olds specifically, directly, via Facebook or LinkedIn because they're not there. So why would you wanna target students or why would you wanna target millennials with flyers and things like that when that's not what they're looking for? So um, just be smart about what you're spending your market budget on depending on who you're trying to attract. So um, just keep that in mind. Now, why not go one step further and actually couple print marketing with digital marketing? And let me give you an example. Competitions, you can do a lot of competitions with QR codes these days. I know it's 2019, almost 2020, and sort of the stigma around QR codes is long gone, um, but you can still you can still use them. There's, there's nothing wrong with actually still using QR codes. If you give someone a business card, you can have a QR code on the back that actually, when people scan through, takes them to a landing page of your service, or takes them through to a competition if you're doing stuff B2C, for example. I see plenty of times at exhibitions and, and presentations and sort of big shows where people are giving out um, 
brochures and, and leaflets and things like that with a QR code to scan and then when you go on there you put your name in or whatever obviously it's a lead generation tactic but you put your name and your email in and you're entered into some sort of a competition or you're entered into a newsletter the fact of the matter is they entered that funnel via print marketing because it's something that was printed and handing out to you physically um, but what it does is off the back of that it ditches that print element at the start the flyer did its job it can now go in the bin but what comes off of the back of that is you get a nice little database going online. So I'm gonna leave you with three cool tips or cool ideas, if you like, for print marketing to execute your next presentation, exhibition, or whatever. Number one, Instagram cutouts. Now these are quite quirky things, so if you don't know what they are, it's basically if you post a picture on Instagram, as you can imagine, you've got the username at the top, a number of likes below, a number of comments, and obviously your picture in the middle with a location tag at the top. What Instagram cutout is, and you can get these on eBay or Amazon, you can even make them yourself, is basically a cardboard cutout that people hold up and with a hole in the middle and they put their face in front of it. Usually has a hashtag of the company or of the event um, underneath it. And what you can encourage people to do is to use that hashtag, take a picture of themselves inside that little Instagram cutout and post it on Instagram for you to then be able to you know, go through that hashtag after the event, pick a winner again, or again, try and engage with these people because if they engage with you on that level, chances are they are pot your potential customers. You can do the same with Twitter and Facebook, but it is mostly seen sort of as, as a nice gimmicky thing on Instagram because it's quite creative and visual sort of a way of attracting customers. So yeah, look out for an Instagram cutout and get yourself one for the next event. Flags is another really cool thing, especially if you're running a venue. Um, I know one client we worked with, they're a wedding venue and they really, really love um, the use of feather flags, which is what they're called, um, because they have a real problem with getting people from the car park to the actual entrance of the venue for some reason, logistically. Um, but what essentially what they utilize is they had some feather flags printed um, and they put on them simple instructions. So printed a feather flag stuck in the ground saying reception this way, car park A this way, car park visitors this way, entrance this way. And essentially it's print marketing. It's not directly you know, resulting in any return on investment, but what it does is when people come to check out the venue, they don't get lost. They don't fear that their guests are gonna get lost when they book the venue for an event. Um, and it's a nice quirky way for people to actually remember the logo, remember the colour scheme and remember the name. So um, yeah, look out for Featherflex. Third and final point, do not print business cards that are outside of the standard UK or US sizes. And I cannot stress this enough. <sighs> the amount of times I get a business card and it's a square or it's like this small or it's this big or it's, or it's, oh no. If it doesn't fit in a little business card folder, I'm not keeping it, it's going straight in a bin, I'm sorry. I know they're creative, I know they can be seen quite cool, but from my experience, I don't know how you feel, let me know how you feel. From my experience, I cannot stand business cards that are not congruent in size to everyone else's business cards. It might be an OCD thing, I don't know, but logistically, it makes no sense for me to keep one square business card in a separate drawer just because it doesn't fit in my business card wallet that I've gotten from other events from other people. So um, yeah, don't be one of those people that will get the business card thrown away because it's a non-standard size. You can have a business card be memorable without making it a different size. Making it a different size won't make it memorable. It will just make people be angry and throw it away or forget it because it doesn't fit in their pocket or something like that, right? So um, yeah, there's other creative ways to make a business card cool. So put a calendar on the back. Like I said, put a QR code on there. Maybe leave, leave a little thing on the, on the back um, with some white space to write some notes for people. Um, if they remember you and you've had a certain conversation, leave some white space so they can make a note of who you are, what you were talking about, your phone number, your personal phone number maybe, or something like that, or um, a meeting schedule um, so they remember when to meet you and where. So um, yeah, that can be quite creative, but yeah, keep it the same size. Right, my mug is almost empty, so that means this video is over. Um, I'm gonna leave you with those tips here. If there's any questions that you have or anything that you didn't agree with or you did agree with, drop a comment wherever this is, I assume either LinkedIn or YouTube, um, and uh, yeah, we can chat from there. But yeah, have a nice day and don't make square business cards.